not reading the camera manual at all. Read your camera manual. Even if you're experienced, I still think you need to read your camera manual, especially if you buy a new one, if you change a new system, even if you upgraded from an older model to a newer model, there might be new features that you don't know about. And if you're too lazy to do that, I at least encourage you to download the manual as a PDF and save it on your phone. That way, if you get stuck in the field, you don't know what's happening, it's bugging out, you can always reference it later. If it's on your phone, you can do control F, search for a specific keyword that you're looking for and kind of get on your merry way because I have had way too many people DM me asking like, hey Reggie, how do you do this on your Fujifilm camera? I'm at a wedding, I'm at a shoot, I can't figure it out, blah, blah, blah. Read your manual, let's move on to the next point shooting wide open all the time. This is something I still am guilty of. I love bokeh. I love shallow depth of field. I love shooting <laughs> wide open. I pretty much shoot wide open all the time. And when I stop down, it's probably like 2.8, which is sometimes wide open for certain zoom lenses. But you know what? It really pays off to learn how to take a photo stop down with deep depth of field and impeccable composition. Because when you stop down, you can't make mistakes. You can't let something just linger. You have to get everything perfect. Anyone can bokeh the crap out of a photo and then just place the subject and your composition probably isn't that great but no one is going to tell but if you can compose a busy scene with everything in focus everything in the right place it just really pops off it really speaks to your skill level as a photographer to get that moment right <laughs> The next thing you want to avoid is having this mentality that you're going to try to fix everything in post. Editing should refine and elevate an already good photograph. Editing should not be the thing that makes the photograph good on its own. Take your best effort to get it right in camera. The lighting, the colors, the composition, the posing. For example, check out this situation. I had this couple pose for a nice silhouette shot. Everything was lined up perfectly. And then I saw this guy in the background kind of like in the little highlight negative space area that I wanted to use. I considered like, hey, maybe I could just Photoshop it out later, but I'm not the best at Photoshop. So I ran over there, asked the guy to scoot over a little bit. He was super happy. He didn't even know he was in the way. I ran back, I took the shot, and it was a much better shot that didn't require any Photoshop, just a black and white conversion. <music> The next thing that you want to avoid and the thing that probably 80% of you are going to do right now is to watch YouTube and not practice what you learned. No amount of YouTube videos can prepare you for the real thing. It, it really can't. I understand that behind the scenes videos are really hip and cool, but they cannot replace actual experience out in the field. If you're completely lost, watch some videos to get your bearings and know what you can expect. But then the most important thing is to stop, turn off your computer and put away your phone and just shoot. Just Try it, apply the things that you're learning and be okay with the fact that you are going to make mistakes. That just means that you're actually learning something. In 2020, 49 million Americans were victims of identity theft and it ended up costing them a combined 56 billion dollars. And you know what? This isn't just happening to people who fall for phishing scams or using bad passwords. 37 billion records got hacked in 2020 alone from major social media sites, national grocery store chains, cryptocurrency exchanges, pharmacies, internet providers, and on and on and on. That means that unless you want to give up the internet, which is something I'm not really willing to do and I don't think a lot of other photographers are willing to do, preventing your personal information from leaking could be completely out of your control. And that is why I'm excited to partner with Aura, who is sponsoring today's video. Aura's app uses AI and machine learning to protect your identity online. Basically, you tell Aura what email address, account numbers, and phone numbers that you want monitored, and then their algorithms will actually scour the dark web, data brokers, and other public records and will alert you to any type of criminal activity. And Aura's app even features a VPN that decrypts your browsing history and allows you to stay anonymous online. And their antivirus software will block malware and viruses before they infect your devices. Aura found out that my information was floating around three different dark web websites and that's pretty scary. If you want to try Aura free for two weeks and see if your personal information is leaked somewhere in the dark web, start your free trial at Aura.com slash Reggie B and actually leave in the comments how many times you sound that your information was leaked around. And with that, let's get back to the rest of the video.
not learning how to use flash. Look, I get it. I used to be a natural light photographer. That's a lot of people say like, oh, I prefer to use natural light. I prefer to use natural light at all costs, but that doesn't mean I don't know how to use flash when the light is absolute garbage. You'll see that I use off air flash all the time. If you prefer natural light, I think just know how to use flash, have one just in case with the hopes that you never have to use it. But trust me, you're going to be in a situation at one point in time that you need flash and you will thank me later that you kind of turn it on mess with it and learn how to use it learn how to place it learn how to change the power stop avoiding learning how to use flash <music> Another mistake that I see on the flip side is beginners using flash for everything. So yeah, I get it. You learn how to use flash or off camera flash. You know how to overpower the sun. This does not mean you have to use this technique for every situation possible. There is no need to use a three point lighting setup to photograph your niece blowing out the birthday candles at a party that you weren't even hired to photograph at all. You're just a guest. All these tools and techniques are best used in moderation. So just know the right time and place to use off camera flash, especially if you're gonna break out more than one please just remember that one of the most popular mistakes is buying gear to fix your bad photos please avoid this more often than not your bad photos can be fixed without buying anything at all i'm serious it's a hard truth that every newbie really needs to hear i'm fine with you liking gear just admit that you like gear and that you like researching about it and that you want something new that's okay i love gear too i love buying things but stop convincing to yourself that that new lens that new larger sensor that new flash is going to be that next silver bullet that solves all your photographic problems it's not going to be it invest in learning photography soft skills invest in learning how to use your gear that you already have learn how to post subjects learn how to find good light learn how to do composition better it's one of those things where you just kind of have to grow out of it so most likely everyone's going to ignore this because you're on youtube researching photography stuff but you know i tried <laughs> Calibrating your PC monitor or your laptop display with a proper hardware calibrator is crucial for getting accurate colors and accurate exposure values for your photo edit. Just because it looks right on your screen, it doesn't mean that the rest of the world will see it that way because there is a potential that you could be seeing everything wrong and with your eyes you're fixing it correctly and then all of a sudden you post it out to the world and everyone sees like why is it super magenta because your monitor was super green or something like that and once you start printing out your work you'll notice that things are coming out super dark or the colors are just way off the contrast is way off the only way to do that is to have a hardware calibrator these things are pretty simple you plug it in via usb to your machine you put it on top of your monitor you let it do its thing then it gives you a profile and then you just go on your merry way it also tells you what monitor brightness is to set your monitor because most of the time people are editing at a super bright level which leads to darker photos overall are there any mistakes that you see a less experienced photographers doing that you think they need to know about share them in the comments down below and help out your fellow photographers mm -hmm.